So friends, the Indian constitution, Zindabad, equality, Zindabad, and love, Zindabad. The organizers of this symphony have asked me to give the keynote. I do hope my keynote will not spoil the orchestra in any way. And if it does, I already apologize. But the idea is really just to honestly share a few thoughts of mine and to make some general points because the other concrete points will be made by all the panelists. And guess what? I'm going to begin with the Sanskrit mantra. I've never done this before. And it says, Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudajyate Purnasya Purnamadaya it says uh, the creator, our creator is Purn, whole. Those of us who are created are Purn, whole. If you take Purn out of Purn, Purn remains. What does it mean? It means that we parents our whole, but so are our children. Our husband is whole, but so is the wife. The employer at home is home, but so is the domestic worker. The teacher is poor, but so is the disciple. So this was the original design of the world. But what is the reality today? In the context of our webinar, the reality is that patriarchy and gender do not allow anybody to remain poor. Gender divides us into two, makes us incomplete, non-whole, it makes us dependent, it makes us unhappy. Nobody, neither a female nor a male, is allowed to be poor. And I think that is where the problem begins. So in patriarchy, we look at children and say, hey, you are superior and you inferior. You cannot cry and you cannot laugh loudly. You are the mind. You are the brain. You are rational. You are the body. Often impure, dirty. You are not the mind. You are the subject. You can decide what you want to do. You are just an object a colony of the subject, etc., etc., etc. So two incomplete halves, one given power and the other deprived of whatever power she was born with. Capitalist patriarchy and religion and culture do this halving, this breaking up of human beings all our lives. And friends, it's not just patriarchy which does it. Caste, class, race, heteronormativity does it too. It divides complete people who have a choice, who should be free to decide what they are, who they are but they are not allowed. Those who are superior, they are considered to be the subjects 
the rulers, those, as I said, who are inferior, are bodies. Those who are the mind are the white collar people, not dirty at all. They don't work with their bodies. And they can be paid 10 times, 20 times, 50 times, 100 times more than those whose collars are blue, dirty, who work with their bodies. These hierarchies, because they are, they are unjust, they need violence. So I'm not at all surprised that there is the violence against women, there's the violence against Dalits, against the Blacks, against LGBTIQ, against anyone who has to be kept in her place. In this system, some of us can be sitting here and doing our webinars, increasing our creativity, whereas millions in the country may be dealing with hum hunger, joblessness, etc. For some, which is women, in the last few months, 20% increase in violence on them. In one billion rising, we say one out of three women are dealing with violence. So we said a billion women. So in the last three, four months, 200 million more women are facing violence or the same women are facing more violence. And yet, patriarchy, caste, class, race are not considered deadly viruses. There is no lockdown about these deadly viruses which are continuing for over 2,000, 3,000 years and race for over 500 years. Patriarchy's violence UNFPA came out with a report a few weeks ago saying 140 million women are missing in the world. And the word missing means they have been killed because of socio-cultural reasons. How many? 140 million. COVID-19 has not yet killed a million. No labs are looking for any vaccines for this deadly virus called patriarchy. My second point is home, which features in the title of our webinar today. About home, George Bernard Shaw said, a happy family is but an earlier heaven meaning before we die, there'll be the real heaven. This one is heaven on earth. People tell us all the time, don't go out. You are not safe there. At home, you are safe. We talk of Asian family values, Indian family values, but all statistics tell us how safe our homes are. Bernard Shaw says family is heaven. Whereas I wrote a song 25 years ago in which I said about the family, Kaun kehta hai jannat se hum se poocho jo ghar mein phase na hifazat na hizzat mili kar kar kurbani hum mar gaye Dushmano ki zarurat kise zulm apno ne hum par kiye. Ghar ke andar bhi ghar mitna hai. To sambhalo ye ghar. Hum chale. So dosto we know how one third of all women are facing violence. And my third point is that I would really like to talk not just of 
women and abuse at home. I would like to talk about men, women, children and abuse at home. For how much longer will we leave men out? For how much longer will we not speak of children who are the direct sufferers, even if only the women are being abused? I believe it's not just women. Everyone is in a mess. Everyone in a violent home. Men are often perpetrators of violence, but many boys and some gentlemen are also abused. Sexual abuse of boys is a lot, but because of patriarchy, they cannot talk about it. Men are related to the women who are victims of violence. And I know that some men also face emotional violence at home. So men are part of the problem. And I believe men will have to be part of the solution. Both women and men and transgender people, all of us together will have to fight patriarchy and say loudly and clearly that patriarchy is messing up everybody. Friends, I really believe, and I've spoken about it a lot, that patriarchy messes up boys and men also in many, many ways. Yes, patriarchy gives them power. It gives them entitlements, but it also dehumanizes them. It also puts them into boxes. If there was no gender, there will be no transgender people. If there was no patriarchy and the desire to continue our families through male heir, there will not be this criminalization of homosexuality. So friends, we really need to include children and men, both when we are discussing the problem, they as perpetrators. I know that most of the perpetrators are men. But friends, even if one man is suffering domestic violence, for me, a feminist, even that is not acceptable. So I think I would like to talk about men and particularly children. And I want to add that most boys and men who suffer sexual violence, they mm -hmm. suffer at the hands of other men, not at the hands of women normally. Women abuse other women. We all know it and we are told every time we open our mouth, aurat aurat ki dushman hai. The infamous mother-in-law. But which mother-in-law? There are two mothers-in-law. The mother of the bridegroom and the mother of the bride. Which one is the one who does violence? All of us know it. The mother of the bridegroom. That means she's not doing it because she's a woman. She's doing it because she's patriarchal. She is behaving in a patriarchal way. Patriarchy is ordering her to do it. I come to my next point. Friends for intersectional feminists. Having said whatever I have said, the real task is humongous. The real task mm -hmm. is to get rid of patriarchy, caste, class, race, heteronormativity, and neoliberal capitalism. Now, since this 
is a huge task. What we do, we start our little organizations and deal with little problems instead of taking on the real issues. So we do what we call in Hindi, Malam Patti. We do patch up. We put band-aid where surgery is required. So I really feel that we need to think about it. Look at my story. For 50 years, I've been doing this work on development, on gender equality, on peace, on human rights, etc. 50 years, amazing work by Kamla Basin, her poetry, her songs, her books. But what is the result of her 50 year? long work. The sex ratio has consistently come down. Female male ratio has consistently come down in the 50 years that me and my organizations have been working. Violence against women is not less. Rapes are much more brutal and not less. The percentage of women in paid work has been coming down. Economic inequalities have become hundreds and hundreds of times more. The environment, not just the ecological environment, the social, the human rights environment, the cultural and political environment has become much more fragile. Therefore, I friends, I really feel we feminists, which includes women, men, transgender people, we need to rethink. And I am going to talk now in my last few minutes about a few things which I feel need a lot of attention. Of course, we need better implementation of laws. We need better police better medical care, medical, better courts, better service providers, etc. But I feel much more than these things, which all of them come after violence has taken place, after injustice has been done. I feel much, much more work on prevention and preventive measures. What to do? Number one, I think we actually need a cultural revolution to look at our religions, to look at our cultures, to look at our media, and to look at the resulting mindset. This is where a lot more work is required. Because for us feminists, the personal is the political, we should begin with ourselves. We should look at our own lives and see, is patriarchy still hiding somewhere in my speech, in the way I behave with other people, in the way I make use of my class provided to me by my patriarchal marriage. We need to work within the families much, much more friends with adults, with elderly people, and with children. Within the families, three very important things. We try and do no gendering, mm -hmm. no telling children, you are a girl, you are a boy. Allow them the freedom. Purna. They are poorn. Why are you making them half? He can be rational and emotional. She can be rational and emotional. So why break your children into halves? Give them freedom. Allow them mm -hmm. to choose, to decide what they want to wear. Second, friends, care work service work at home should be
for both girls and boys, men and women. Not because women's workload needs to be lowered, but because family needs to become a partnership. And mainly because I feel this is the way to make boys and men gentle, caring, and loving. We women have no special glands which makes us look after other people. It is practice. So the slogan is Maka hi kyo lete naam, ghar ka kaam hai sab ka kaam. Care work is everyone's work. And friends, my next point within the family, property for her. Girls and daughters need to be given property and enough research exists that women who have any, any property face much, much less violence. So the slogan there is, Beti dil mein, beti will mein. Beti dil mein, beti will mein. Na dahej na mehengi shadi. Beti ko denge property aadhi. And friends, my next point is, larger campaigns. Like today, so many of us are together from so many organizations. Much more feminist solidarity with all kinds of groups so that we can take on the corporate sector, we can take on the capitalist patriarchy. We can remind people that there is an Indian constitution there is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which says all human beings are born equal and free with dignity and rights. Thank you very much.